Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? As promised, we are on with the legendary investor, Lumberjack Landlord. I just call him Matt. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Mike. How are you doing? I'm legendary doing well. Investor. Oh, yes, Lord. legendary. Well, you could be legendary in your own mind, maybe your own household. Yeah, yeah that's, that's about where it stops, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, I don't know about you, but I thought about you yesterday. I read this, this article on CNBC, Diana Olick, declaring that the housing boom is over. Big letters, like <laughs> bold, like Zuber, you're an idiot. What are you doing? The housing boom is over. Sell everything. So I listed yeah. everything and just got out. What about you? Yeah, yeah this just in. We're <laughs> in trouble, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, like that going. What is she? What, what? I mean, what possibly could she be talking about? And and again, the, in the headline, which is what most people read. Let's realize that most investors course. read headlines. Most owners of houses read headlines. Yep. They don't read. The, and that's all it said. Housing boom over. I'm like, right. Shit, what, <laughs> what did I miss? Yeah. yeah. We have a truck. We, we're going to have trouble. Mike. Yeah. We're going to have trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first thing I thought about, for, honestly, the first thing I thought about after, after I kind of got out of my head, what is she talking about? The next thing yeah. I'm thinking about is like, cool. I'd like to buy some more cheap houses. Exactly. Yeah, like, like, hey, if you were if you were banking on that, you know, foreclosure collapse and yeah. the what do I know? You know houses in half and ten percent mortgages and all this other stuff, and <clears throat> it's just it just is what it always is, which is them just reading, you know, analyst reports that come out, and mm -hmm. as usual, it's facts in a vacuum, yeah. and not considering everything, and quite frankly not doing the work. Anybody yeah. in your course is more qualified to answer a real estate question than Diana Olick is. Yeah. She's Any just, one of them. She's just reading headlines. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So let's, so let's talk about it. Right. So let's yeah. break down the article. Right. So the article first and foremost, even though you would not know it from the headlines was only about new construction. Right. It had nothing to do with existing homes. Yep. So I, I actually haven't asked any of my experts this question, but other than your primary residents, which don't count, have you ever bought a brand new home as an investment property? I was so it's so funny that you got there because that was exactly when I was reading it. I was like, I wonder out of all of the thousands of people that have taken your course, how many of them went all in on a brand new build and then use it as a rental property? Not many. I mean, not unless, you know, somebody from Blackstone is yeah. taking your course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Currently, my my students are not doing build for rent and they're not they're not buying 500 brand new <laughs> exactly. homes from, from DR Horton or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, I, I've never I mean, I think the newest home I ever bought was a 1980s build. The newest home I ever bought was an 1880s build. Like, <laughs> damn New Hampshire, they built some. They built some quality stuff out there. Yeah, well, no, it was like honestly for me, it was. I think it was like 19, like 71, like 1971 or something. Yeah, for an investment because you know what most people will find is that the cost per square foot to build mm -hmm. is largely you're paying a premium for it being brand new. Mm -hmm. and brand new to you. Mm -hmm. And so largely speaking, those numbers don't work really ever. I've honestly yeah. never seen a new one where I was like, wow, but it's new and I won't have to fix it. I was always much further ahead of the path, mm -hmm. buying at 100 or 125 a square foot, mm -hmm. putting in 75 bucks a square foot to get me to 200 because right. the new build was still till 50. Yeah. And my product was better because I wasn't using builder grade <laughs> materials for spec houses. Yeah, it's, I mean- the one thing that people need to realize if you're following one rental at a time, you're in the course, you're doing the work, yeah. right? Is whatever you can do not to compete with owner occupants, you win. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. Because I keep trying to tell people I, or, or coach or advise, and I do it on the daily financial news. You do not want to compete with the owner occupants. They can flat out pay. They can, they, they buy on emotion. You're buying. If you're following my strategy on yield or cash on cash. It's not a fair fight. If they love that house, they are going to outpay you right. and likely put less down. That's right. That's right. So I want to, I don't want to compete with owner occupants. And what do owner occupants love? They love new. Yeah. Well, I don't absolutely. even look. I can't even tell you the last time I looked at a brand new house. Well, I mean, just for just for giggles, I'll do it with anytime there's a new um, development being mm -hmm. put in. I'll look at the I'll just look at the numbers. And they yeah. have been between 300 and 390 a foot 
Yeah. You can't make money. No. So I remember, I remember a decade or maybe it was, I think this was right before I went into apartments because I couldn't find a deal that made sense. I started mm-hmm. looking at new construction. And oh, by the way, you look at, you know, I had a three bedroom, one bath, or maybe it was a three, two. And because again, I was, my buy box was really small, right? Yeah. Yep. So the first thing I tried to do is I, okay, maybe if I go new, right? The whole idea was because I, I bought cheap. I was taking my cash and putting it into repairs. I was like, well, what happens if I didn't do that? Could I pay more and buy new, right? That way I wouldn't take the 15 grand of repairs and I could just put it in the down payment on a new one. Lo and behold, the prices on new were, I don't know, $150,000 more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the rent, generally speaking, negligible. you don't negligible, negligible. right? You yeah. might get 50 bucks more. And oh, yeah. by the way, the, the other thing that happens in new constructions, shit breaks a lot more. Way more because it's spec build. It's yeah. garbage. It's garbage product. A lot of times it's being put in. Well, that and it has the extra. Point. It has owner That's occupant right. extras. Like, for example, I remember one thing I did that was totally stupid years ago is I put garbage disposals in five of my units. Oh, Why? big mistake. Yeah. Because I liked having a garbage disposal at home, <laughs> right? Why not give a garbage disposal to my tenants? Yes. I said, you know what? Let's try it. I ripped all five of them out in six months. Yeah. Yep. The repair calls. Oh, it's just crazy. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they think you can literally, oh yeah, I'll just put a hippopotamus right down in the- <laughs> Eggshells, you know, like, man. Egg it's, it's, yeah. God. I mean, everything. Like, oh, you mean that can't like uh, grind up the rocks that I found out in the yard? Can't yeah, marbles. Out? I mean, there's yeah. I mean- <laughs> Again, it, and it got me, the reason I took them out is my expenses went up and I got no rent. The garbage disposal gets me right. $0 more rent. So yep. why would an idiot add those? So, and if you're going new 100%. construction, you got dishwashers and garbage disposals and mm-hmm. you got, you know, you got air, you got, I don't know, wall mount, AC, you know, thermostats and all kinds of stuff that's going to break. I'm like, oh my God. And you got, oh, it's just. We did crazy. the only thing, the only extra that we do consistently is dishwashers. Really? Yeah, I don't yep. do those anymore. I did and the that reason, once. Oof, no. And the reason that we do them is because um, we find that if you have that checkbox renter, that they're going down the checkboxes, that's one that most others don't have. Okay. And for me, I can add it for about 500 bucks. Sure. So if I can add it for 500 bucks and it instantly gets me more. So even if I'm in the same... 50 to a hundred dollar price point as these other units, I have a dishwasher. They don't. Right. And so we've seen actually, we've literally seen people make a decision based on like, well, you had a dishwasher. Yeah. I was like, really? That's, but that's it. Yeah. Outside of that, like garbage disposal, well, even if they ask, like I've had nope. a couple people ask for garbage disposal. Well, I was like, no, 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 not happening. No, no, absolutely not. Nope. Yeah. That's a no go. Yeah. The other thing that I want people to hear in this conversation, again, that article was all about new construction. Some of the numbers were yeah. scary, right? Down 20% yeah. year on year, uh, sure. down 6.6% month on month. But I mean, there's reasons for that. What have we been talking about? Supply. Supply, right? And oh, by the way, this is a Q2 number. What happened in Q2? Lumber spike. And, right. and again, I talked about on the daily financial news, people were just laying foundations yeah. and not building. They were choosing to wait. Guess what? You can't live in on a foundation. You got to. It takes Mike, a while. Rates spiked too. Yeah, rates, rates were up a half. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Rates were up a half. I mean, you were at. I mean, I heard some loans. You know, Matt, the mortgage guy, and you and your conversations, and some others that you know, some other mortgage brokers I talked to, they were three and a half no points. Yeah. Well, now you can be high twos no points. <laughs> yeah. It's so all changed, I mean, yeah. and that was all in Q two. So I'm very interested to see kind of the numbers for Q3 in Q4, because I think there's going to be two things. One is I think you're going to see a ton of people back to work. Mm -hmm. Two, I think you're going to see, and and based on that, just a massive flood, you know, into the, into the market. And I think the other piece that you're also going to see um, along, along those lines is exactly like what we were just talking about, which is people just getting back into it and saying, Hey, now I'm working again. I've got money again. I'm back doing my thing again. The, you know, unemployment ends up going down rates absolutely plummeted. And now they're below three. That's what I'm interested to see over the next three Mm -hmm. months, because I think if there's any months where you're going to see that million jobs month, it's going to be in the next, next couple months. I agree. Yeah. So the thing I really want to talk about is this article. There's really two things I want investors who follow us to to follow. First is Frankly, let the media go negative. The, the media yes. wants to be on either extreme. Boom, bust. For them, I'm calling, I'm, and you've heard me call it, I'm calling a housing slowdown or a plateau. Totally agree. Totally agree. That's boring. The media yeah. doesn't want to talk about that. That's, that doesn't get headlines. That doesn't get eyeballs. It doesn't sell ads. 
Yep. So, so anytime you see a scary headline, which again, that one yesterday, when I read it, I'm like, the first, my first thought is, oh my God, what I miss. And then of course I read the article. I'm like, you're, be, you're, you're being mean because again, do the average seller sees that? Oh, it's yeah. just, it's not cool. Um, but then again, read the articles. Cause again, if you're following my stuff, you're not buying new construction, new construction had other reasons to slow down. Right. Um, and then, and then just, just to be totally confusing, Case Schiller came out today. Did, did you see the numbers for Case Schiller? I didn't see that yet, no. So Case Schiller uh, does the, the 10 and 20 yep. city survey. Sure. Uh, it, it was a record, 16.6% for the 10 city and 17% for the 20 city. Holy cow. Yeah, Phoenix was up almost 25% year on year. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a housing boom is over. Yeah. <laughs> An abrupt, uh, you might want to call the Morbies. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> pace, pace, watch out. Yeah. Hey, stop doing deals. Diana yeah, Ehrlich said. Diana Ehrlich said. <laughs> yeah. And then, but again, you got to watch this data because, again, you know this case Schiller's data is old. It's 60 days. It's May. Right. It's, we're right. in, we're basically in August. I mean, yeah. what, what the hell does May data have to do with August? Nothing. I mean, at five o'clock, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> and it, that stuff's two months old. Like, come on with that already. And that's yeah. why, Mike, that's why so often winners in what we do aren't the ones studying the old news. They're the ones making the news today, yeah. talking to brokers today, talking to agents today, looking at open houses, looking at available units that you cannot replace doing the work. Yeah. If you're only reading everybody else's report, you're 60 days behind me and Mike. Best case. Period. Best case. You're yeah. 60 days behind us. And you got their skewed biases to either be negative or great. That's right. right? That's so that's, right. that's, that's why I've, that's why I preach, talk about step one, step two is focus, buy box and daily that's disciplines. Right. Once you do that, it doesn't matter. All these national headlines, which I'm just as guilty talking about, because I'm trying to talk to a national or worldwide audience. Sure. But, right. When I talk nationally and I talk about, you know, Case Schiller being up 17%, you should be able to look in your little buy box and go, well, I'm up more, I'm up less, I'm in the middle. That, I mean, if you're one of my students, you have you have intimate knowledge about your buy box and that is powerful. Well, yeah, I mean, especially because do you care about anything else? Do you no, care you should. What, I mean, do you care? Not what, really? No. But largely speaking, like, do no. you care what one million dollar plus houses are doing right now? I don't give two flips. I don't care. I don't care. Congratulations. No. I don't care. And I know that's pulling up median sales price, but you know what? I was outpriced to single families <laughs> in my market a year ago. Exactly. That's why I sold them all. So it's like, okay. And like, I'm only very, very focused on five to 20 commercials yeah, and two to four units. There you go. And quite frankly, Mike, there's been so much money. There was a negative AM deal, negative amortization deal where literally if you bought the place with 30% down, it was $4 million deal. You bought the place, you put 30% down, you had a $3 million balance. The debt service on that $3 million with taxes, insurance, you know, principal and interest was just about $18,700 a month. Oh my God. The really bad news is that the building only made 18 two. Oh shit. So you it were losing a, money guaranteed. Guaranteed $500 loss every month. And that's if nothing went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and that's if you self-manage. <clears throat> right. Exactly. Yeah. And I just, I literally said to the agent and I said, do you have any more of these that you could not send me? Yeah, exactly. I don't like, want those. Those I are said, bad. This is a horrible deal. And they're like, well, they're banking somebody, you know, is going to buy it for cash. And I was like, are there that many people out there with $4 million that are that stupid? Because if there it. are, I'll show them my book. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And my book actually makes money. And if I get paid based on a negative $500 per unit am. I'll sell both. <laughs> you can have everything. Yeah. That's, well, that's why I did last time. Do. You know that. Yeah. I, and that's the thing is, Mike, this is the opportunity right now where people are in a given asset class Yes. and they need to understand the asset class that they're in. And if they've mastered that buy box, they now need to be looking at the asset class that they can go to. Yeah. You know, is there enough? I mean, again, you have to master the buy box. You have to manage the buy box. You have to be doing that. But once you've mastered that, mm -hmm. you've got that time and you got that spreadsheet working. Then you start looking at, okay, what are the, what, where is everything else pricing per unit? What are the mm -hmm. rents there? And really learning new parts. Cause Mike, I was like you, when somebody told me that I could buy a building that had more than one house in it, mm -hmm. I was like, that's probably thought provoking. Yeah. It's like, wait a second. I could do that. That's, that sounds lovely. Multi <laughs> units. I get one deal, but I get to do multiple units. Yeah. I really like the sound of that. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, I remember the first time somebody told me I could buy an apartment building. I was, I was like, no, I can't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not rich. What are you talking about? Only yeah. rich people buy 
apartment buildings. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the game changer. And that's the thing is yeah. you gotta, you gotta know your buy box, understand mm -hmm. it thoroughly, understand your market thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to see compression in those numbers, then you start to look because you might not be in the wrong market. You yeah. might just be in the wrong asset. Exactly. And that's what I hope people take from my <laughs> book, right? A lot of people think the grass is always greener somewhere else. I've never left my market in 20 years. I've yep. changed asset classes. That's right. right. Because they, they, they move and adjust differently all the time. So this has been a lot of conversation. I'm happy to say that the housing boom isn't over. We are just, we are going into a housing slowdown. I'm more and more yeah. convinced, but uh, the housing slowdown doesn't get uh, clicks. So um, they're going to spin every statistic in the worst way possible. So Matt, how can people follow you? Be part of your world. Lumberjacklandlord.com and Lumberjacklandlord on YouTube. And um, the awesome, if you're part of the course, yes, certainly you can see the awesome house hacking stuff, but that Saturday group was a lot of fun. Awesome. The Saturday group was a lot of fun. I love the interaction everybody has able to bring some new fresh ideas that they could try out. But I think I'm yeah, going to, awesome. I, I think I'm going to have you host next Saturday. If you can, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing at noon, your time, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it on Friday and make sure you're good. Yeah, sounds good. All right, buddy. Thanks again. Thanks, Mike.